Um, thinking about how music moves in the world and brings us to unexpected places, um, I was reminded of the other day of a photograph um, by the Clare box player Christy McNamara. Um, and if you look at Christy's website, um, christymcnamara.com, the main image on it is this absolutely beautiful photograph of two women dancing in a kitchen. And they're his aunts, uh, Kathleen and Bridie. And it's a really remarkable photograph. There's something about the light. You can see a tree out through a window. There's a dog in the corner. And Christy told me about how he made the photograph. And then he told me another unexpected detail of the life of one of his aunts. And I thought, you could look at that photograph forever and never, ever think that one of the women had lived such a life. So it's a lesson, too, in looking beyond what seems obvious. Um, and uh, another little detail of that photograph is that it apparently hangs, the original photograph hangs on, well, probably one of uh, the apartment walls belonging to Brad Pitt, uh, because uh, Christy met Brad in LA somewhere along the way, as you do, and uh, Brad somehow saw that photograph and kind of fell in love with it, and there the photo is. Um, but here's a poem I wrote out of all of that called uh, Soyez Sauvage uh, for Christy McNamara. A photograph, black and white, two women dancing in a kitchen, their backs straight, their white hair shining. You can almost see the turn of the tune you can almost feel the tenderness of their touch, such sure-footedness. Two trees adrift outside the window, a collie alert and calm, eyeing lens and watcher. The image is perfect, a still life in motion, a landscape in stillness. You can almost touch the music. The dancers are sisters, Bridie and Kathleen, both reared families, both loved music. The moment the dance is lensed and set by their nephew, who played the accordion earlier, watched them in motion, then chose cassette music, irresistible, to lift them up again so he can lift up his camera and click. Two sisters, old and light, dancing forever. Click again. The Dordogne, 1941. Bridie is a postulant in the Order of St. Martha. She works in the garden, her brown skin browner from the sun, her black hair shining, her curls wild and free, her strong hands marked from earth and rose. A German regiment occupies the convent. The commandant questions Mayor Marie, who is, who is hiding here? takes Bridie to be a young Jewish woman, will not believe her strong French is Irish, plans to transport her to a holding camp. Something, papers, patience, mother's art of persuasion saves her. She sails for Ireland, seldom speaks of France or history, but to her nephew, she occasionally mutters words of a language she loved, to the end, she tells him, soyez sauvage, stay wild, untamed. His hair like hers, his face, his hands, he points the camera, click. Such grace we get and do not know. Um, again, journeys in time, journeys that women make, in particular in this instance, um, this is from a fragment of memory that our mother shared with us somewhere along the way. Like a lot of Irish women, uh, she had gone to work in London uh, in the 30s, uh, and a group of them came back just as the war was starting. Uh, their lives might have been completely different if they'd stayed, if the war hadn't happened. I guess, fortunately for me, uh, she came back, and. Uh, for others in the area similarly. Uh, but it's this little moment in time, a journey back to Ireland. War wives. They come back in September 39, soon as the war begins. Five of them from Tarman on the same boat. Margaret Wynne is light-hearted as a lark, sings the mountains of Morn for Mary. 
Oh, she says, what kind of men do you think will be left for us? Or will we be war widows before we wed at all? They waltz a few unsteady steps on deck. The sea is glorious blue, gulls wheeling in, thrum of the engine, the freshening day, an orange vivid against her new plum coat. Kate Degnan is morose, cast down. I didn't want to leave at all. What's back there for me but hardship? The Lynch girls, whom she barely knows, are all agog. Mary, your clothes are lovely. We used to see you on the road when you worked at the lodge. Where in the world did you get the shoes and hat? They'll say you're gone from knowing at the bridge. Thirty years later, she'll remember the crossing. Margaret's sweet voice, sea spray on the air, the devil and his mother fighting, sun breaking through misted rain as they arrive in Kingston. Margaret settle, marries and settles in the town land where she grew up, battles and survives disease. Her six daughters form a band, Maggie's girls, the youngest dies in a car crash near the cross. Margaret goes a year later almost to the day. Mary kisses her faded lips, whispers, do you remember the sea, Margaret? Places a Mayflower in her coffin. Um, again, journeys, connections, the unexpected. Back in 2013, I had the privilege of going on a little musical and poetry tour to Vietnam and Thailand with uh, the great musician and uh, carrier of music, Mick Maloney, uh, and the Mulcahys uh, from Clare and a few others. And it was extraordinary to see this exchange of music between Irish and Irish American and Vietnamese musicians. O'Carlin's music being played uh, in Vietnam. Uh, and Irish musicians beginning to to hear and play a little of Vietnamese music. Um, and a lot came together in the making of this little poem, the notion of Ho Chi Minh in exile in Paris, looking to the revolution here and to the guerrilla warfare of Michael Collins as an inspiration to go back to fight the French in Vietnam, and a million other things. Um, the Green Fields of Vietnam for Mick Maloney. Eleanor Plunkett in Saigon, Carolyn walks with Ho Chi Minh. The flying harp, the piper's call, a fiddle carries Sligo East and all that we have suffered, known, all laughter, hunger, hope is here. The rebel heart, the burning land are held in string and bow, in voice and hands, nimble, strong, pour out the music on pick time. Music pours and gives us piper's tunes, the woman at the river, Auron Gra Vietnam, the butterfly at the wake, in Tarman, Hanoi, here, jig and reel, slow air, remembering the end of time, the end of war. The good dead in the green and blue, in hills, mountains, rivers. Music pours, the future hovers on the threshold of the past. A man in exile dreams his country free, at the mouth of flowers, Michael Collins falls. The poet rides on horseback through the night. We cross from north to south, west to east, borders blurred and notes made new. A black bird in the Mekong sings the green fields of America and Cook on Lundavui. The beautiful goldfinch in a Saigon garden sings nightingale and rose. Time stops. The dancer steps, and poised, we stand upon the edge, strike the note, and soul rise up and dance. Um, just going to read one little poem um, out of Arigna and the Mines, uh, which is you know a constant kind of well of inspiration for me. And uh, it was back up there last uh, Friday with Edwina Guckin. Uh, making a little film of a, a video for a new song by Ailey Blunny, a wonderful singer-songwriter from Carrick here. And uh, that video will be online in October, and the song will be performed tomorrow night by Ailey and her sister Roshin. Fantastic song, out of the minds, out of that history, out of energy around here and a million things. Um, but, um, yeah, I thought I'd just read this little again, poem of divilment and memory um, called A Brother Remembers a Small Act of Defiance. 
He met the owner on the way in. He was late. They glowered at each other. 20 past, 20 past, said the boss. Is that a fact, said the brother. He was first out at the end of the shift. You're early, said the boss, not smiling a bit. Tell me this, me good man, and tell me no more. What's the meaning of it? The meaning of what, says me boy, pure innocent, and him raising his face. Being late and then early, last in and first out, you're a neff in disgrace. Is that a fact now, said the brother, winking an eye. He looked at the green stripe on your man's tie. God's truth, and let him strike me down for what I say. But I'd hate to be late twice on the one day. <laughs> um, local wit, uh, a true story, and you can't beat it. Um, I haven't repeated any poem so far over the four weeks, but I'm going to read one tiny poem for a second time uh, uh, because I was asked to, and uh, it always is. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. Uh, and I'm going to read this uh, for Nova and Frank. Nova, you particularly liked it. And it's, it's actually a, a little anecdote out of Ballymanone and Fermanagh, story that was, well, it wasn't a story, it was some bit, a, a little moment that my friend Henry Glassy witnessed there in the 70s where a young woman was sick of toiling and making box tea and working for the men, and she made her speak about uh, how change was going to come. Um, so it's uh, what a young Fermanagh woman said as she toiled with praties and fire. One day I'll walk out of here, and I'll walk and I'll walk until I find a ship to America, and when I land there, I'll set out again and keep walking till I meet a man who has never heard of Boxty, and I'll marry him. <laughs> One can well imagine. Um, uh, two little quotes that struck me in the last week. One I didn't know, somebody sent it to me. Music is the best consolation, said Martin Luther King. And the other, which came back to me again from Ballymanone, uh, Peter Flanagan there, music carries us. They're both true. Um, the people who have made and who make and carry music give us so much, and we should be eternally grateful to them. And it wasn't always easy. I mean, I remember stories of how musicians were disapproved of, uh, how even within families, uh, sometimes an older person didn't like to see a young person pick up an instrument. Uh, and I know of fiddles destroyed. And it was a fear of the music. It was a fear of the young people following the music and going off in a way, a bit like the woman in the box, going off to find, to shape their own lives. Uh, and, yeah, convention. Um, anyway, uh, the Ward family have carried the music in Leitrim for so long, uh, and Lisa, Neve, Orla and Sarah, who are going to play for us this evening, are carrying it on again, making it new, bringing it into the world. And um, their cousin, Sean Ward, wonderful man, great friend of Paggy Dagnan, that link goes back, his parents playing music. Uh, I remember his mother playing uh, in Paddy Max back in the 70s. And just the wonder of that, and I've talked about this before, you know, just where, where we hear music for the first time and the joy of it. But it's, it's really terrific to have uh, the Ward sisters and Sean Ward to play for us this evening. Um, between them, the four young women uh, have, I think, 27 All-Ireland medals in music and dance. Uh, no small feat, you know, and they play a myriad of instruments, and they make this very distinctive and wonderful sound. Um, enjoy the evening. I wish we had more of these to look forward to, but for Liam, we might, you know, maybe next year. <laughs> next year in Jerusalem, uh, Lacoon of Jay. Uh, please welcome the Ward Sisters and Sean. <laughs>
from Aberdeen. He, he wrote a good many tunes and uh, he wrote over 600. No, I'm not going to take them all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I want them. <laughs> Time we're going to play two hardened pipes. One is called the fairy hardened pipe. What's the other one, Sean? Good question. <laughs> Thank you. 
see another Scottish lawyer. It's, uh, um, it's uh, called Mrs. Jemison. <laughs>
introduce ourselves, we have Neve here on the accordion, uh, we've Lisa here beside me on the fiddle, and um, myself, I'm Sarah, and I play, I suppose, an arrangement of instruments, so I have the fiddle today, I have the bar on, the mouth organ, and hopefully later on you might get a dance out of me, you never know. And then here we have Orla beside me, and Orla plays the flute, and she also plays the mouth organ, so you might see a duet from us uh, later on. Um, I got these from um, when I was studying music in Maynooth University and um, one of the brilliant uh, trad lecturers there, Adrian Scaddle, um, he taught me these two tunes, um, so the Headford Crossing and the Sheep in the Boat, thanks very much. <laughs> The name of the tune, the name came from a farmer, a sheep farmer, and uh, the sheep were so fond of the farmer, they hopped in the boat with them. So that's the name of the tune. That's where the name came from that tune. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
are going to play a tune on the mic organ now, so I'll let you. Yeah, up or down. Yeah, so I suppose with the mouth organs, uh, people are probably thinking, you know, it's more rare, I suppose, than the, the fiddles or the flutes, especially in this end of the country. But um, I suppose how it came about really was um, my late grandfather, uh, Charlie Costello, from out the Dyra Road, he used to play um, one of the small harmonicas quite a bit. And when I was young, I used to hear him and I was fascinated. So I suppose once I had kind of grasped the tin whistle and the flute, um, I put it at the top of my uh, wish list for Christmas and I got a harmonica uh, from Santa. And I suppose it went from there really. And I taught myself um, how to play it. And then a few years later, I suppose Sarah here beside me, she wanted to, she was eager to try it out as well. So that was brilliant because I suppose I had someone to play the harmonica with as well. So of course then Orla started doing Clackiona here and so she would have started the competitions there and um what what age group would you have started Orla? I'd say it's probably about eleven. And then under fifteen. Think. So I saw Orla 12, yeah. um coming home with these medals and I thought, I sure I can do that. Um so anyway it started off by me one evening um knocking on Orla's door and saying, um you wouldn't mind Orla now giving me a lesson in the, the old mouth organ. So this would have been around, I'd say I was around, I think I got my first All-Ireland medal in the mouth organ when I was nine. So myself and Orla would have arranged little meetings. So I'd ask her what time she was available. So Orla would have been in secondary school at the time. So um, I'd go into her when she'd come home from school. I was eager to learn. And uh, sure, who else better to learn from? Uh, than my sister, you know, and sure, like it was passed down from generations to generations, and we would have photos of our grandparents, um, Willie playing the mouth organ. So, um, yeah, I suppose then I saw Orla with the medals, so I said, yeah, I can do that. So <laughs> off I went to the flag hill, and the first one that I competed in was in uh, Tullamore, and I came second place in the All Ireland. So I was delighted with that. And so from there, I sort of kept going with it and um, I went up to senior and I kept competing. And I suppose it's something to keep the tradition alive in our family. And it's something you don't really see um, a lot in the other counties. And um, so, yeah, we'll keep the mouth organ on the map anyway in Leitrim, hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so uh, we're going to play two jigs here. So... Uh, we're going to play, what's the first one? Uh, oh, mm, what's the other one? Miscolored. Yeah, so the mis yeah, Miscovered Mountains, and then we're going to go into My Darling Asleep. Ready?
My mind will never be at ease deep with the dancer and last night's fun. <laughs> dancing for years and the costumes, the tan, everything, and um, made up the hair, the curls. So then we changed over, I suppose, and we were doing a lot of trap music. We came across the Shano style and we'd never really done much on it. Um, so then Sarah and Orla both started Shano dancing because you can wear your own clothes, you don't need a dress, like a costume. Um, it's very relaxed, you know, you can relax your hands, the steps are not easier, but they're, they're not as complicated, you don't have to jump high, so it's low to the floor. So I hope you enjoy. So we're going to play great, two, two great Leitrim tunes, Creamers and the Holly Bush. Okay. Let's start really slow now. Not too fast, so.
um, uh, the king of the king of the accordion, Joe Bark himself. during lockdown and it's all fiddle music and a lot of Leitrim music and tunes from Leitrim that have never been recorded before so it felt like it's very important that we keep the Leitrim style of music, the Leitrim tunes that have never been played before or never recorded before um, and kind of just keep the Leitrim style and tradition alive so we recorded that on fiddle music so if anyone wants to get one off me after. Much. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you. 